Hello friends, how are you doing and I hope you really are all having a great and fun time and everything is going smooth and awesome, right? So we are doing the chapter, microbes in human health, right? microbes in human health and in this we talked about so many important things right we have already spoken about the biogas or the gober gas you know the main component of which is methane They say, you know, that 65 percentage of the biogas or gober gas is methane, right? 65 percentage is methane and methanogens play a very important role in the manufacture of this biogas, right? Methanogen play a very important role, right? Also, what did we do more? We talked about the biogas plant, right? The biogas plant where you know where there are settling tanks, where there are mixing tanks and the gas tanks, you know, what happens the slurry that is the cow dung and the water is taken mixed and you know then it is allowed to you know uh, be acted upon by the anaerobic microorganisms and as a result of which a gas called the gober gas you know is produced consisting of methane carbon dioxide that is stored for some time and then taken out through, the, through an outlet chamber, okay, that is taken out through an outlet chamber. So, what we will see that the biogas or the, you know, we have all done this. We talked about the sewage treatment plant and all that, right? And the <coughs> the Yamuna plan, right? The Ganges plan and all that. Sewage treatment plant where the sewage is treated, you know, before uh, you're dumping this, you know, polluted water into the main river bodies. Today we are going to talk about the biocontrol. Today we are going to talk about the bio control. Now what do you mean by bio control? The word biology, you know, it's living life control means to control the same thing. So the use of living organisms, the use of living individuals, okay, to control any disease, to control any, you know, harmful process will be referred to as the biocontrol. This may be defined as as the control of any disease or harmful process or harmful process by the living organisms okay so this may be defined as the control of any disease or harmful process by the living organisms. So basically, you know, we are controlling any disease, any plant disease. So we can say control of plant disease, control of, because we are talking control of plant disease by living 
organisms. Okay. So basically, you know, we are talking about the control of plant disease by living organisms and that is what is biological control. We will try to use chemicals, fertilizers and you know, all those things, you know, which can harm actually, you know, which can harm the, uh, you know, the environment, which, you know, creates pollution in the environment. So, the insecticides the insecticides right the insecticides and pesticides are though useful in killing the insects and all in killing the insects and thus enhance the field output but it is toxic and extremely harmful to humans and environment okay the insecticide and pesticides are though useful in killing the insects and thus enhance the field output that is you know yes the uh, the field output will improve because you know the harmful insects and all these things you know have been killed but it is toxic and thus extremely harmful to humans and environment thus what they are doing they are creating pollution what right they are creating soil pollution they you know they are creating many other pollution you know which is definitely harmful to us to the animals also so these create or cause soil pollution as well soil pollution as well and indirectly you know when the soil gets polluted the water you know because the water seeps in from the soil and you know the sometimes what happens is soil because of some soil erosion uh, you know it gets carried away to the water body so indirectly the water also gets polluted okay so we see you know if you're not using the right uh, you know chemical if you're using all these insecticides pesticides and all that they are not only you know creating a balance you know a disbalance but creating the you know uh, you know they are polluting the soil as i told you the soil polluted would be indirectly polluting the water and the whole ch cycle and the chain you know ultimately gets disturbed hence the biocontrol agriculture the biocontrol agriculture relies less on chemical products relies less on chemical products and more on natural processes for the control of pests
right that is that may include that may include natural predation natural predation rather than introducing than introducing the harmful chemicals the bio control agriculture relies less okay on the chemical products and more on natural processes for the control of pests this may include the natural predation so basically you know what they are trying trying to tell is let us you know stop these chemical uses you know these chemicals on one hand you know they are acting on the pesticides and the insecticides and killing them okay i mean uh, these uh, the uh, pesticide is something which kill the pest insecticide which kill the insects okay so you know let's stop the use of these pesticides and insecticides which will kill the pests and the insects definitely but at the same time what they will do they will add some pollution to the soil they will add some you know toxic material to the soil and ultimately you know that soil you know we have seen it gets recycled you know from the soil the mineral nutrients are taken up by the plants these plants are eaten by animals these animals you know all those who are non vegetarians and you know they are eaten by us and all in different ways so ultimately you know the whole thing will circulate in the environment and that would not be very beneficial okay so hence the bio control agriculture relies less on chemical products and more on the natural processes however the organic farmers the organic farmers and the organic farming you know it tries to tell on the other hand that let us you know biodiversity is very you know promotes health or promotes health processes that means you should not try to you know try to uh, you know kill the organisms or something by you know that will that would reduce the biodiversity so the organic farming is of the approach right the organic farming is of uh, is of the approach that organisms the organic farming is of the approach that biodiversity okay that bio diversity promotes health and health processes okay hence they are of the view hence they believe in the holistic approach they believe in the i mean the holistic word will be too much in the approach in the approach to create right to create or develop so why do we need an inoculum of curd 
to milk for curdling it right. Why do we need an inoculum of curd to milk for curdling it? Now, what is an inoculum? A small amount of curd which is added to milk, which is added to milk, right? So, what will we see? The curd contains lactic acid bacteria right the curd contains lactic acid bacteria and lactobacillus, right? The curd contains lactic acid bacteria and lactobacillus, which will form the organic acid or which will form the organic acid and bring about the conversion of fermentation and brings about the fermentation of entire milk into curd of entire milk into curd, right. The curd contains lactic acid bacteria and lactobacillus which will form the organic acid and brings about the fermentation of entire milk into curd and hence what will happen and that is why you know this inoculum of curd to milk so that this you know bacteria which is present over here in curd you know goes into the milk, multiplies rapidly and converts the entire milk into the curd, right. We now move on to the next question. Mention the information that the health workers derive by measuring BOD of a water body. The main thing you know we need to mention or we need to talk about is a BOD. So what is a BOD? BOD is the biochemical oxygen demand. Now BOD of any water you know will tell us whether the secondary treatment should continue or stop right this gives us an indication this gives an indication whether the secondary treatment this gives an indication whether the secondary treatment right of sewage should continue or not okay so this gives an indication whether the secondary treatment of sewage should continue or not and what do we mean by this see when the sewage the primary treatment is done what we get we get what we call as a primary sludge 
is not it. The primary sludge we get right that is the waste and then we get the primary filtrate what we call and then again this will be again you know this will be again secondary treated. So, what is you know what is the primary treatment doing? It is removing all the physical all the physical impurities right. And the secondary treatment what will it do the secondary treatment. So, now after the primary treatment has been done and all the physical properties have been that is physical uh, you know impurities have been removed what remains in the sewage water what remains in the sewage water is an impurity as an impurity is only the organic content or the organic waste right. The organic content present the organic content are present in the sewage water in the sewage the organic content are present in the sewage water after primary treatment. right the microbes the microbes added feed on this ok the microbes added feed on this organic content of sewage water of sewage water ok. Now, when the uh, microbes you know are feeding on this sewage water uh, on feeding on this organic matter to consume the organic matter of the sewage at the same time they are respiring and thus when they are respiring they will need oxygen. So, the microbes added feed on this organic matter or content of, of sewage water they require oxygen for respiration they require oxygen for their respiration right and the more and the more the organic content the organic content of sewage more activity of microbes will be required can you see this more activity of microbes will be required more con more activity of microbes will be required and hence more will be BOD that is biochemical oxygen demand. So, more will be the oxygen demand more will be the BOD. So, lesser the BOD lesser the BOD lesser polluted is sewage water and more the BOD that means more oxygen demand why more oxygen demand because more microbe activity and why more activity microbe activity because these microbes have to consume the organic matter and hence they require more oxygen and that is the whole significance of biochemical oxygen demand right. Moving on to the next question. right mention the role of cyanobacteria as biofertilizers. So, cyanobacteria acting as biofertilizers is not it what are cyanobacteria these are also called as the blue green algae blue green algae 
many of the cyanob you know many of the cyanobacteria they fix atmospheric nitrogen okay and hence bring the nitrogen of the you know of the atmosphere into the soil so they are increasing the nitrogen content of the soil acting as fertilizers isn't it many of the cyanobacteria many of the cyanobacteria fix atmospheric nitrogen fix atmospheric nitrogen and thus this this brings about nitrogen in soil and soil gets enriched and soil gets enriched with nitrogen thus acting as the fertilizer many of the cyanobacteria perform okay many cyanobacteria in fact most of them perform photosynthesis perform photosynthesis and increase the sugar content of the soil and increase sugar content of the soil so and what are fertilizer fertilizers add mineral nutrients to the soil bio fertilizer living organisms which will add you know mineral nutrients to the soil right and this is what the cyanobacteria are doing right so now we'll move on to the next question name the source of cyclosporin a how does this bioactive molecule function in our body so you see you know this is two marks this is two marks and hence the answer have to be in two points or mainly you know they want to know two things first of all what is the source of cyclosporin a so source of cyclosporin a is the fungus trichoderma polysporum fungus trichoderma okay trichoderma polysporum this you have obtained your for one mark and what is the function in our body function of cyclosporin a the cyclosporin a acts as an immuno this acts as an immunosuppressant in our body immuno suppressant in our body that is suppresses the immune system suppresses the immune system mainly suppresses the t cells okay mainly suppresses the t cells right so this is the function of cyclosporin a